Hello everyone, and as promised, welcome to our lecture, our brief lecture on Usmanes and Benes, God's Bits of Wood. To start with, I provided a link here for you uh, to a digitized copy of the work in case you uh, had difficulty finding it in hard copy. Um, so you can use this um, as your copy if you so desire. Now, Usmanis and Bene, as I mentioned in class the other day, was better known as a film director in his later years. Uh, he actually was a pioneer in African cinema, but was also one of Africa's first novelists. In fact, he was publishing uh, well before the world had heard of Chinua Achebe, who actually ended up eclipsing him in the literary world. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Usmane Zembene is an extremely important figure in, as I mentioned again, both Africa cin African cinema and African literature. So, God's Bits of Wood was first translated from the French and published in 1960. Um, and if you recall, again, from some of your high school history classes, we know that the 60s, uh, and actually even earlier in the 40s and 50s, uh, throughout the world were very shaky times politically, and certainly uh, there were multiple movements, civil rights movements, um, across the globe, here in America and, of course, abroad. God's Bits of Wood is a politically charged novel about revolutionary struggle without being too heavy-handed in its morality. And it is actually based on the 1947-48 railroad strikes that occurred in Dakar on the line from Dakar, Senegal, to what is now Mali on the eastern uh, coast of Africa. And it's centered around workers demanding higher wages, pensions, allowances for their families, and recognition of their union by the railroad company owned by France. It is a highly visual novel um, that portrays many strikingly vivid images, as would is to be expected from one who would later become a filmmaker. If you would like to look up some more information on this railroad strike, which I highly encourage you to do, um, this is just one of many links that can take you uh, to that background information. The story of itself begins in Bamako, in what is now Mali, with the family of Bakayoko, the leader of the strike, who has disappeared sometime before the novel's beginning. Though unsure of themselves without Bakayoko's guidance, the local people reach the decision to join the strike and later grapple with the question of how to deal with strike breakers. Scenes in Dakar introduce characters who are more sophisticated and morally ambiguous, such as Bogosi, a good-looking young man whose dedication to the cause is compromised by a love of comfort and his condescension toward the quote-unquote common people. The Islamic priests, or imam, imams of Dakar, are portrayed as supporters of the French colonial regime. One of the most memorable scenes of the novel comes when the prize ram of a sanctimonious district chief is unceremoniously butchered by his sister when he eats her family's rice, which touches off a conflict between the local women and the police that escalates into a firestorm. Almost half of the book, however, takes place in the Senegalese town of Thais. The town is characterized by rickety shacks, some upturned tombs, walls of bamboo or millet stalks, iron barbs, and rotting fences. Yet it proves to be the heart of the railway strike. Here live some of the stalwarts of the struggle. Samba Nandulugugu, a curious little man who serves the community as a walking newspaper, so to speak. Maimuna, a blind goddess of the night, who sings the legends of her people, and Penda, a feisty young woman said to be a prostitute, who plays a key role in the women's march on Dakar, with which the novel culminates. Although the characters spend much of the book wishing for the return of their leader, Bakayoko, it's noteworthy that the hard work of the struggle continues without him. The author may have realized that Bakayoko is more intriguing as an absent ideal than a real man, because when he does appear, he is a bit of a revolutionary cliché. He's self-sacrificing, humorless, totally dedicated to his work. The most interesting characters in the novel, and the author's greatest achievement, are the women who overcome their fears, superstitions, and petty animosities between one another to take part in the protest march from Taste to Dakar. 
The march brings to a head a struggle that has lasted over four months and caused immense suffering and the loss of lives. An important reason for its success is that, more than Bakayoko and the other men, really it's the women who understand that the goal is to struggle without giving way to hate. A very important revolutionary message, to be sure, that has um, absolutely worldly implications. Now, I've included a list of some of, of the principal characters, and I realize that for us Westerners, or those of us really who don't know the French language, it might be a little difficult to wrap our tongues around the various um, character names. So this is just a quick reference for your pronunciation. You're going to want to pronounce every syllable when you read a character's name. And this includes even the final E when marked, e.g. Ramatouli, yay. Uh, accents fall on the final syllables, as in French. Um, so again, uh, this is just a handy reference um, in case you forget who is who and how they're related to one another. Um, just a various list of the characters. Um, and as promised, I have created a writing prompt for you guys. And that writing prompt has a password, and the password is Senegal with a capital S. You will have an hour to complete the exam, but you want to make sure that you have the book read in its entirety um, before you start, uh, start taking this sort of writing prompt. And again, you may also want to keep notes on hand as you, as you are uh, reading the novel um, so that you can have a clear set of uh, information when you are completing the writing prompt. Um, the writing prompt will be up until 5.29 p.m. on July 3rd which is the same date of your second project. So make sure that you get both of those done before we meet again face to face um, in class. And again, of course, if you have any questions whatsoever, please um, email me and I will get back to you as soon as I can.